guys, I'm back with another Overwatch tutorial, except this time it's with my favorite character, Okami Hanzo. Today I'll be showing you how I made his shoes out of pretty much just gym floor mat. This is very much like the Naruto shoe video I did a while back, except this time there's a lot more detail to it, and I actually put a lot of effort towards the patterns this time. So now you can download them in the description box below and follow along. So let's jump right into the build process and I'll see you at the end of the video. After downloading all the pattern files, you'll want to start out with the one called Left Soul. This may take a few tries, but you're going to want to find the perfect scale percentage to outline the shape of your foot as if it were the insole of your shoe. This is the space where your foot will be inside of the shoe, not the entire shoe. So it's perfectly normal that this will look a bit small for a shoe. Once you've found this percentage, you want to print the rest of the patterns at this same exact scale. I printed these on cardstock since it's so much easier to trace and it's durable enough to last a second round of tracing for the other shoe. On each page I have a recommended foam thickness for the different parts of the shoe, but you're more than welcome to change these up if you wanted to. In fact, for this build, I only use the half inch and two millimeter foam. But if I could change one thing after making these, I would have used thinner foam for the gold detail on the back and slightly thicker foam for all the yellow parts. It would look a lot more accurate to the game if I did that. Next up would be to cut out all of these patterns. When you get to cutting out the heel sections, you'll want to cut past the hash line I made where the curved lines converge into one solid line. This part will matter to achieve the correct curves going on in the back later on. Now, we're going to trace these patterns onto your foam. For the toe section, I like to place these side by side to avoid having to glue them together later. If you are wondering, these were only split in half for printing purposes. I found that pinning them down onto the foam helped keep the patterns from sliding around, so I definitely recommend doing that too. When tracing these parts, it is important to stay consistent so that you don't get confused when cutting up the foam. I first traced the curved line as far as it will take me, then I folded the curved area over so that I can follow the straighter line all the way down as well, which should intersect with the curved line along the way, leaving you with something like this. Since we traced around the patterns, this means that when you cut out the foam versions, you'll cut along the insides of your lines to get your shapes just right. For the tricky heel part, all the sides could be cut out just like normal, but as for these two sides, I cut the straighter side first, then the other. I must have forgot that the record button existed, so here's a reenactment of how I cut this out. As for the holes on the gold part of the heel, I just cut straight through to get to where I needed, and when it came to gluing everything, I just patched it back up. To get the perfect angular bend that I have going on here in the back, you'll want a rotary tool to help you carefully sand down the inside corners. Goal is to be able to glue these back together so that you end up with the right shape. I started gluing the heel and top parts together first, making sure to align each of the hash marks with each other. Before gluing the two halves together, I added the detailed lines with a blade and used a heat gun to open them up a bit. Since the heel details are sunken in, I decided to cut it out completely and pretty much do the reverse of the raised details I added on the Naruto shoes. Afterwards, the two halves were good to combine. The top part will be a bit tricky and will want to bend the opposite way, but that's fine to let it dry as is. If the back of your foam has any type of texture, it's best to use a rotary tool to smooth that out for better adhesion, but mainly just the area where you are adding glue. I started adding the edges of the shoe, wrapping them around, making sure the foam is all aligned at the bottom. When adding the gold heel part, it's best to start in the center and work your way outwards. As you can see, the lines I traced while it was flat were a little off. I used the rotary tool again to chamfer the edges of that piece that we just glued on, the bottom corners that are exposed, and then the inside edges of the shoe to help attach the top part. A heat gun was used to warm up the foam to give it a big enough curve to be attached to the rest of the shoe. Once that's glued, you can use the heat gun for minor adjustments on the shape to help keep things symmetrical. 
I wasn't liking how the shoe was looking like one solid piece, so I gave it more of a separated look by taking the corner of a rounded sanding bit and sand it along the seam line. Next up is sanding down the front of the toe area with a sanding belt to give it an angled look. The rest of it was cleaned up with some sandpaper glued to a paint stick. Now we are left with the 2mm foam. Such small pieces make a huge impact on getting that futuristic ninja look. Sewing pins were once again used to help decide where exactly I wanted everything positioned. It's important to keep this gap here to get that illusion of the foam being wrapped around this bigger piece. Then I traced the parts to know where these go back once I added the glue. And then afterwards I did the same steps for the remainder of the pieces. After sanding the bottom where the new foam will be, we're ready for more glue. I started from the bottom and then worked my way up. And when you work on your shoe, keep in mind that these parts are aligned with the bottom of the parts previously glued. As for the part that will be eventually painted black, these were a bit too long, so I just cut them down to size. And after that last piece was glued on, I then moved on to paint. I first started out with a few coats of Plasti Dip. I needed to seal the foam, but keep things flexible since this is a shoe and will go through a lot of bending. The next color was gray. It took me a while to find out the perfect shade, so you'll see these shoes get gradually darker throughout the rest of this video. To help minimize overspray, I taped off the next sections that I was going to paint yellow. And although some paint did seep through, all I had to do was grab some more of the gray paint and patch it up. But if you're feeling real pro with a brush like I did at the time, you can skip the tape and paint these next parts black. The final color was the gold at the top of the heel. And after about 4-5 to five layers, the shoe was complete. So I really hope that this video was easy to follow and that those patterns end up being useful. If not, I'd love to hear some feedback, suggestions, questions, or even just a comment about why I should not be a Hanzo mate. Trust me, I'll read them. Making these patterns into something that's easier for others to understand did take up a bit of time. Of course, it's something I'm new at and I'll get faster at it over time, but the real question is, should I keep it up? Was it useful to you? I'd like to know because if it's something you guys don't care about, I'd rather save myself a whole bunch of time and just focus on the builds. But if it is useful, I'd gladly take the time to get better at it. So yeah, thank you all so much for your time and support. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys think. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for future videos. And also leave a thumbs up on the way out. I'll see you on the next one.